And uh, welcome to Perspectives. Jim Hockaday is our guest today again. We, last week we talked a little bit about infrastructure. There's a lot more to talk about besides roads, and we're going to get to that in a future program. But this week I wanted to get into uh, economic development because it seems like there's a lot going on um, in the Conneaut area. And one breakthrough thing I think is the... Um, the new truck stop, truck world, what is that? Uh, is that going to pave the way for a lot more going out on Route 7? Oh, by the way, hi, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> well, hi, Bob. Thanks for having me back. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Um, it's always good to talk with you. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, obviously everybody has seen truck worlds uh, being constructed. Um, really want to thank mm -hmm. Gary Burke, his family, and his entire team uh, that made that possible. Um, yes, is the short answer uh, to to your question. I mean, they so, they bought a lot of land, right, to to build more stuff on it. They're not gonna let that go to waste. I wouldn't think. Yeah, no, no. And and so one of the one of the things that I want people to recognize when they had that um, their, their site plan approved, um, if you notice when you when you pull in at the traffic signal there in the truck world, there's kind of that undeveloped corner. Right. Mm -hmm. um, that is, that is set and decked for um, a couple of outlaw, um, most likely quick serve restaurants. Mm -hmm. So um, we're in the process of, of, of helping Gary and his team. Uh, his son, Patrick is, is kind of the lead on it. Uh, marketing that space uh, to either uh, to be custom built and built to suit um for whoever would go there uh, on the on the on the south side across the street on under ridge road mm -hmm. um, you know the the former beef and beer the stolson property is is kind of the the, the local way we refer to it i guess right um, that property is obviously benched at this point um if you look at the the site work that they did they used uh, that material to be their base to, to raise truck world up, but it also built another uh, development platform there for them. And so that one's a little further down the road than the corner lots because there's still some, some action items there that we're working with ODOT on. Um, and, and, and the other <clears throat> uh, secret, not so secret, uh, you know, project, um, this is something we've talked about, you know, the Reesburg pipeline uh, came in, you know, along that ridge line at yes. the top of the hill. And, and the city was able to use uh, uh, two NOPEC grants uh, to acquire a series of taps. And one of them is actually on the hill behind that. And we put an RFP out in the spring. Council authorized a request for proposals uh, for a natural gas uh, provider because there is no natural gas south of 90. Um, I don't know if anybody knew that, um, but there's no natural gas down there. Dominion doesn't have any assets south of 90. Um, and that was a major, major, major uh, uh, restriction factor for what happens uh, out there. So uh, Loves is actually propane over electric. Uh, that, mm. That's how they heat that facility and heating, you know, 15, 20,000 square feet. On yeah. The, you know, it's, it's an expensive proposition. So it's a it's a, a kind of a market bending opportunity that we'd be able to build and establish a natural gas utility at that location also a pretty unprecedented move on the part of a municipality to do a public private partnership with a natural gas uh, provider a new utility so to speak that would not be Dominion um, Dominion actually declined it three years ago when we, we, we approached them about providing services here. So um, they're a great partner. They're the whole reason why uh, Reesburg Pipeline is there. Um, but they, they opted out of this, but it gave us an opportunity to do something a little bit different, uh, a little bit more unique. Uh, where so what, what does that mean, though? Like, uh, is this going to make it much easier for maybe a hotel to come in or that sort of thing? And absolutely. Um, you know, energy is everything. So um, if you don't have electricity, you're not building anything. If you don't have natural gas, you're not building anything because the cost of doing business is, is that much higher if you have to import those things. So that's mm -hmm. really one of the key ingredients that was missing um, was, was natural gas availability. So, so are they um, looking at marketing a hotel there where beef and beer absolutely. was? Yep, yep. So, 
No, and what, what and about the other side of the road, um, the west side? That, that looks like okay. a... Sure. Well, I'll deal with those in turn. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's talk hotels first. Okay. So, uh, 2020 is a thing. You know, uh, COVID is real, and, and its uh, its impact on the market is as real as anything. Yeah. So, I think what you've seen, and, and you've seen a lot of this, is business travel has changed. So... Um, you know, you look at the the West End and downtown uh, Cleveland. Uh, the, the Cleveland International Fund is foreclosing on a thirty six million dollar loan to the West End downtown, the Hilton downtown, both brand new, both built within the last three or four years, and they're struggling to stay alive. Um, and 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 that impact is being seen across the hospitality industry. So. Um, anytime a, a, a large building or anything like that, it, there's going to be loans involved. Commercial loans and hospitality just are not happening right now. Banks aren't even hearing about it. They're worried about salvage, salvaging the 3,500 mm-hmm. loans in Ohio on hospitality-based structures in the state of Ohio. So, so we're looking that, down the road? Yeah, I think we're looking down the road. Now, I, I know who's going to be building the hotel. Um, it's just going to be a question of when the banks reopen their doors to uh, okay. new hospitality structures. So it's, it's a setback, but it's a setback industry-wide. Right. So uh, unless it was fully financed, ready to go before March, um, you know, it, it, everybody's sticking a pin in it because everybody's kind of wait and see what's happening with business travel. Our business is going to go back. We don't know. And, and so we kind of got to let it sort itself out a little bit. Um, and, and, but something will happen there. There's also space on that hillside, uh, for, um, some outlaw restaurants and, and other things. So when we did the improvements for Underridge road, um, the, the developer and owner, Gary Burke, he laid in taps for gas. He laid in taps for water and sewer. So, you know, obviously when we did all that infrastructure, we did it with an eye of what's the next phase and that's the next phase. And there's a bigger opportunity there as well because there's about another uh, 100 acres behind that on the hillside that, that um, you know, mm-hmm. that, you know, bears mentioning. And, and with access to natural gas at those locations, I mean, you think you got it all. You got water, you got sewer, you got natural gas, you got all the electric you could ever want. And, and, and you have fiber optic at the curb. I mean, that that's really attractive. And the key piece was getting Truck World there because Truck World will generate traffic coming off of the 90 corridor to the 7 corridor. Okay. Retailers look at traffic counts. And the traffic count on I-90 is fantastic. We need to get the traffic count up on Route 7. So uh, putting that service amenity for I-90 there in Truck World and getting some of that vehicular traffic off on, on Route 7 will boost the entire Route 7 corridor's prospect for retail. You know, uh, unfortunately, you know, uh, 2020 and COVID is a little bit of a shot in the gut for, for everybody. Uh, particularly in the retail sectors, but it's but, a temporary you know, shot. Yeah, this too shall pass. Well, well, yeah, also, so, you, you know, you're talking about the the yeah. lack of <laughs> the the lack of in the past water and sewer, and that was was a problem. But also, you have the cuts in where people put driveways. That was a hassle with the state, which may have kept people away before. Also, so that's not a factor anymore, correct? Uh, the, correct. Well, the, the big thing was getting the signal there at we'll call it Truck World and and uh, Love. uh Love's Drive, and 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 uh, I, I want your listeners to understand the the traffic studies, the impact analysis that we had to go through to um, to accomplish that, and it, it was it was absolutely significant. Um, it took about two and a half, about two years, two and a half years to get that final approval. Um, and, and it took a lot of effort. It took a lot of, uh, you know, political effort as well. Um, I really appreciate uh, Senators uh, O'Brien and, and, and Representative Patterson. They were indispensable in making that happen. Um, so, you know, it took a lot of work to get ODOT into the place where this was a safe thing to do and something fair to do. And understand that that limited access, that, that what that means is just like I-90, the federal government paid 
for all that frontage. All those property owners got checks from the federal government in the 1960s to say they would no longer have access, a curb mm. cut access to that. So one of the things that happened when, when, when Mr. Burke bought the property, there had to be an appraiser, and a, a right-of-way appraiser that came in and said, well, the constant value dollar of that right-of-way access to put that driveway in, we were going to owe the federal government $185,000 for the right to put that driveway there. Uh huh. Um, so um, what 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 happened is we ultimately made improvements to the state route in greater value than the hundred eighty five thousand dollars. So it wasn't a monetary transaction, but the improvements had to be laid into the ground uh, in order for that to be acceptable. So okay, it's a big 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 process. We got about four minutes left. I want to talk about the other side of uh, Route Seven a little bit, and also. Um, the problem, the plans for the hotel down at Layview Park, I take it that's the same kind of problem as, as, as I, Route 7? Uh, yes, so, so I'll, I'll deal with that one first. So they had submitted an initial development plan um, that, that we selected, said their proposal was the best. Um, and, and we were in the process of, of negotiating that when things just literally fell apart on us. So uh, in, in July of this year, they sent a letter saying, we are still really, really interested in this project. Our banks are saying they're not going to consider any new hospitality loans at this time. We would like an additional year to, mm -hmm. to consider our path forward here. And, and, and I don't think there's any problem in, in doing that um, and saying, yeah, you, you have an additional year uh, to, to see what the market does and, and, and kind of kind of call it a, a redo or a do over a mulligan. I think 2020 is a mulligan yeah. uh, all the way around. Um, it's been awful um, for, for people, for individuals, people that get sick. I mean, people have lost their lives. Sure. It, it, this is awful. And, and so, you know, for a business to request some additional time to consider what's going to happen in the future, we don't know either. And, and we understand their perspective. So, although there, um, you know, there have been some good things going on. Look at, I, it looks like Perkins, somebody's going in there. Yes. Yep. So, um, yeah, they're, 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 for small business, we've seen an unprecedented amount of small business starts. Um, you know, uh, we look at the Conneaut Float and Fly and some other things that yes. have gone in. Um, beautiful projects, well done. They've had great success this year. Um, really appreciate the Port Authority and the Conneaut Foundation uh, and, and, and Civic Development Corporation for, for being a participant in that as well. So uh, just a great collaborative so, and this, this is showing the results of, of hiring the company that is going out there looking for economic development. That's yes, so, right. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jennifer Six of Insight Advisory Group. Um, we talk almost every day. In fact, she she called while we're in this phone interview. Uh, <laughs> so we work together incredibly closely. Um, and really, what it is is uh, they're augmenting uh, our our administrative capabilities. Mm -hmm. Um, because honestly, the only person in the city that works on economic development is, is my office. Right. And, and, and we have to do better than that. The other thing is, is it's a collaborative mechanism because she works with the foundation and she works with the Port Authority. It is a collaborative, cooperative agreement. Okay, we've got, we've got like 45 seconds left. So tell us about the okay. other side it's because we sure, mentioned sure. it. <laughs> so, so, uh, so anyways, we, we collaborate, we share that resource. And uh, I, I think it's been tremendously successful, and I think you're going to see some more successes here real Good. soon. The other thing that the other side, uh, a caddy corner, I get that question all the time. A gentleman owns it. Um, he's preparing to market it, um, and is, things are dramatically more marketable when they're not covered in trees. Um, mm. So he pulled a permit about three or four years ago now uh, to clear that, and uh, we talk on occasion, and and. You know, it's really, he's looking for the best opportunity for that property. So there's no definitive plan there. But certainly, uh, having available spaces that are for sale and prepped, ready to go, are really important um, because it's just about finding that right project. Uh, and it'll take off, so. Okay, excellent. So right. lo looking ahead, the next couple of years looking pretty good. I think so. I All think right. I think in a great position. Thank you very much. Jim Hockaday. As our guest again today. <laughs> uh, goodbye. I'm Bob Lebzelder on Perspectives.